what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench and we have a super quick tutorial for you guys this week. I thought we'd get back into some expressions because I haven't done one in a little bit. So we're going to be talking about this right here, which I'm calling Flavor Text because I'm an old school Magic the Gathering nerd. Channel Fireball for the win. So you can do this in a few ways. You can have a whole bunch of text layers. You could keyframe the source text property. But I think I have a more interesting solution that's a little easier to type out. So let's check it out. In this collecting window comp right here, we have a text layer. And right now it has an alpha mat right here. I'll turn that off. And you can see I have a whole bunch of text lines right here. Let's actually solo this real quick. So you can see I have a whole bunch of things over and over again, and that's actually to lengthen the timing on here. Because this is actually driven by an expression tied to the time of the comp that shifts everything up one line at a time. So I usually like to throw some uh, Easter eggs in here, like reticulating splines from SimCity, along with some other factual stuff related to the actual work. You got little making copies here, you got a little wax on, wax off, and then it goes off. We keep on 2001, Blade Runner slash Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. And then a little Top Gun reference to top it off. So what I have here is this text, and it's set to 37 pixels in between. So if you can see here in our actual expression, this takes the time and it takes, subtracts the endpoint so that this doesn't actually start at zero. And then we calculate our offset. And so what we're doing is we're taking that time value, dividing it by the frame rate, which in this case is 24. And then I'm dividing that by seven, and I'm flooring that value. So we're at frame 26 right now, and we're just going to ignore that we're subtracting out the endpoint right here. So say we're 26 frames in the line here. The value is going to be 3. 7 goes into 26 3 point something times. But we're flooring that value, so basically we're just losing the decimals. So every 7 frames, the value is going to change. So the offset then is going to be multiplied by 37, and that gives us our offset. And then at the bottom, we subtract the offset, which makes this move up. So the first one's 0 times 37, so it doesn't move. Then 1 times 37, so on. Then all we do is we throw a little alpha mat over that, a little block up here. So if we go over here to where this changes, right? Let's find where that actually changes. I'm going to go up to the next one. All right. So reticulating splines is on for 2. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You can see it moves up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And it moves up to the next one. So to change this, all you have to do is go in here and change this to whatever frame rate you want. So now it'll change every 10. So I'm going to set that back to 7, and that is our effect. Let's solo that. So we go back out. I hate that the render queue is here. I don't know why it keeps popping into different places. So you go back out, and you see how it works. So you can have like things move across the screen at predetermined intervals of time and distance. So if you want to make like a loading screen or something where something moved across, you can do that. So there's a lot more utility to this than just changing the text. So go out and see what else you can come up with. All right, guys, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what I'm doing, check out patreon.com slash workbench. And make sure you check out workbench.tv for more great content. If you're following us on Twitter, you might have noticed I've actually finally updated the blog. I put up a post about plugins and scripts that I use frequently. All right, guys, that's it. I am Joe from Workbench, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.